out of this. Greetings, I'm Shad, and in this video I want to discuss with you the idea, and the fun idea, concept, of advanced materials for swords. Because most swords, well, when I say most, all real functional swords are made out of steel. And the reason being is that this is actually a far more complex thing than you might realise. There is an obvious caveat to add for you know, anything else, is that swords aren't used in warfare anymore, and if swords were actually on the main front of warfare, if we could invent some type of advanced technology that could block bullets but not melee weapons, I actually feel swords might come back onto the battlefield. So if, say, they did, and there are a lot of brains put onto this puzzle, would we actually start to use other materials to make our swords out to get better performance, better durability, holding an edge for longer, to produce far better cuts. And so there are a couple of materials already, uh, you know, thrown around on the internet, and one of the more prominent ones is that of carbon fibre. Carbon fibre is said to be able to approach strengths ten times greater than that of steel uh, in certain circumstances. Not in every, you know, in every iteration of carbon steel is that that much stronger, but in many instances it is presented as being stronger than steel, and it is incredibly light. So, if that's the case, why are we not making blades out of it already? Well, for a very significant reason, and I actually can demonstrate this with you firsthand, because this subject is something I have been interested in quite a while. The idea of, you know, different materials to make swords. And so I went online and had a look if there were carbon fibre blades available. And I found this little interesting duvidaki online. And so, for the sake of uh, science and research, and uh, you know, this video I was intending to make, I bought it and uh, have it right here. Now, what's interesting about this is that uh, I've only ever used it once because the first time I used it had interesting results, and that was cutting open one of those uh, plastic blister packs and. Uh, have a look at what happened to the edge. I'm not sure if you can see it, but if you look closely on the edge, you will see dints and little chips, okay? Hopefully the camera will remain focused. If not, I'll take a close-up shot and superimpose it. And this edge got significantly damaged just from plastic, and that's the massive flaw with carbon fibre. Although it is impressively strong, with its, you know, resistance to things like uh, deformation and everything like that, its ability to hold an edge is utterly pathetic, okay? And that's actually the weakness that we come across in many, many other materials when we're looking at a better substitute for steel. This is the same with aluminium and titanium. Their edge retention is absolute garbage. And retaining an edge is actually very significant and important when it comes to a sword's overall function and utility. Now, edge retention is just one property that you want out of good sword material. The other materials is resistance to flex, and I'm sorry to the scientists out there, I'm probably not going to be butchering the specific types of names. I'll probably even use deformation in the wrong context scientifically, because, you know, there are actual proper deformations of elasticity, deformation, other things like that, and I'm going to be butchering, okay? I'm not a scientist, but I have, you know, a working understanding of functional swords, and hopefully as I convey it in a descriptive way you'll know what I'm talking about. So you actually want a sword to be stiff as possible, but generally the stiffer they get, the more fragile they get, and they will snap. And so the best balance we've been able to find with the best material so far that we're still working with, steel, is flexibility, okay? That it can actually bend, but then flex back to true, and that gives it far more resistance and durability in the uses that swords are put to. Now, flexibility is not a universal thing that you absolutely want with every sword. It's kind of the best of both worlds, because materials will reach a certain point that overcomes their resistance, and they will bend. And so flexibility enables them to flex back to true. But if you had a material that was so stiff and rigid that it took far more force than what you could generate just with your average, you know, arms and the way in which swords are used, well, it wouldn't need to flex if it can just simply not bend and it would take like putting it between two blocks and jumping on it to snap it or something like that. Well, then we would be in the realms of something that could really work well if it could hit the other properties that swords need. And edge retention is such a big one, because something like carbon fibre is really impressively strong, 
But the other interesting thing about it is that it's impressively light. And this is where we come into a bit of a misconception. The idea that lighter is better when it comes to swords. And that's actually not true, okay? If this sword only weighed, say, 0.1 of a kilo, the strength behind the cut would actually be reduced very significantly because there are natural properties and things that you just have to account for when it comes with swords. For instance, width, okay? So if we approach the camera, every sword is going to have a certain width. Yeah, right there, right? That's what we're looking at, okay? Now, when a sword strikes into something, it isn't like the material just happily and magically moves out of the way. No, you're basically forcing a wedge into that material, and that material needs to move out of the way for the sword to pass through. And so the more resistant that material, and the thicker the sword, the greater the friction it takes, and oftentimes, if there's not enough force behind it, the sword will literally get wedged in the material cutting, and that's when you see those attempted cuts, and it's just stuck and you can let go and just hangs there in the material. And so a sword's weight is actually a very crucial element to add greater inertia to the strike to force apart the material and enable it to pass through. So simply put, a sword needs weight. So if you could have excellent edge retention and make this whole blade out of carbon fiber, its cutting capacity would probably be even worse. The way to offset the loss in power due to its reduced weight is by making it thinner. And in a magic world, okay, a perfect world, if you could get the best material ever, the most optimal properties for a sword to have would be for it to be a bit lighter, okay? The lighter it is, the easier it is to handle, move around, redirect, and the faster you can strike at your opponent. It does give you an edge. But to not lose out on the cutting capacity, you would want it to be very thin, and then you would want it to be very sharp and be able to retain its edge retention, and very, very stiff to not break bend when you're you know, using it. But there's no such material that hits that. But if we look at carbon fiber specifically, come on, get in, get in, get in, get in, get in, get in. There we, there we go. So if you look at carbon fiber specifically, what kind of properties could we get out of it? Because, I mean, it's not a lost cause. It's very light, it's very strong. And if it's stronger than steel, that technically should mean we would be able to make it thinner, which would make it even more light than what it already is, right? But we should technically be able to make it thinner and just as strong. And carbon fiber does have flex, and so it hits that thing where it's not so stiff and rigid that it won't bend, but it will flex. And flex is a wonderful kind of substitute to the limitational strength that swords have. And to make it at least functional, it would actually have to be a type of composite blade where the central part would be carbon fiber, but the edge would need to be made out of something far stronger that would retain its edge for longer. What would be the best material? And this is where people sometimes say, diamond, okay? Diamond, hardest material known to man, or hardest natural material known to man. That would work really well, but there's a bit of a problem with that. Diamond is very, very hard, and therefore brittle, okay? The idea that diamond is indestructible is utterly wrong. If you had a whole sword made out of diamond and you hit something, it would break. Diamonds can break, absolutely. But could we make the edges of this theoretical sword out of, say, diamond, and the, the central part being, uh, being carbon fiber? And yeah, carbon fiber is up there, but I mean, what about titanium? Titanium is lighter. It can actually have good, flexible properties. But again, horrible at holding an edge. Maybe even a titanium blade with diamond edges. Well, diamond has a big problem. There is an assumption that a diamond blade will stay sharp forever. No, it's not going to stay sharp forever. It'll stay sharper for longer than average, absolutely. But to keep a very fine, clean edge on it for a long time? No, in actual fact, there are diamond-edged razor blades that are produced. And I looked into these things because, again, fun idea. I've been doing a bit of research throughout the past, uh, trying to figure out is, you know, the possibility. And the interesting result of these diamond-edged you know, edged razor blades is that even though really sharp and they retain their edges for longer, the microscopic edge is actually a bit jagged, okay? And in use, in actual shaving, it in some instances did not produce a cleaner shave than steel because steel is easier to sharpen, okay? You can actually make the microscopic edge of it far more neat and even. 
what am I talking about here? When you sharpen an edge on the microscopic scale, there are these tiny little like bevers and little ruts and things that cause the edge to look a bit like this. And this is why when you sharpen steel, you finish it off with like this leather strap or a uh, leather kind of thing. Now that leather yeah, sharpening thing, there's actually knife sharpening channels on YouTube, they're an interesting watch. They will know more specifically what I'm talking about here, so comment in the description if uh, you have a video that describes this better than what I am. But what the leather does, from my understanding from these guys that I've watched, is that instead of actually, you know, cutting into the metal, move metal, making it sharper, just cleans up the edge. So instead of being a bit like this, it makes it like that. And that's when you get to the insanely as sharp as you can possibly get it, sharp level. And you can do that with steel because steel actually has enough give that you can manipulate the edge through sharpening. The big problem with diamond edged blades, razor blades, they're basically impossible to sharpen, and they do get blunted. And so if we made this, you know, sword, this wonderful, incredible sword, made out of carbon fiber with, say, diamond edge razor blades about this long, running the length, because we wouldn't want to, we wouldn't want to be solid. That'd be like a, a razor blade embedded into the carbon fiber, you know, core, uh, about that long, that long, that long, so it could still flex. And the problem would be, once it gets blunted, this all is basically ruined, okay? So then, what would be the best material to make the edges out of? And you know what? Might surprise you. I think it's still steel, okay? Remember, steel has a lot of different types. There's low carbon, there's high carbon, but even in the high carbon category, there's a lot of types as well. And there's a lot of different alloys as well that give different properties. And when you look at some of the hardest types of steels, like tool steel, you know, the type that you have on the end of drill bits and stuff that can drill through metal and stuff like that, they are actually ridiculously sharp. Now, would you ever make a sword out of such material? Generally, no they would be, they would snap, okay? They wouldn't, they'd be so stiff and rigid that as soon as too much, you know, force is put onto them, they would just snap in two. But if we added it to a more flexible and perhaps resistant, stronger carbon fiber with edges made out of this really impressively hard tool steel, okay, now we're far more within the realms of possibility, because you can sharpen these a lot easier than diamond, all right, and they are insanely sharp. The only types of swords that sometimes are made out of close equivalents, not perfect one-to-ones of actual tool steels, but types of tool steels are actually certain katanas because their blades are usually thick enough that they can resist the flex and resist snapping and bending as a result. So there are, you know, swords made out of tool steels, but not the extreme ones, the ones that are insanely, insanely hard. And those are the ones that I think could be really interesting composites to be added with a carbon fiber or maybe even titanium blade. But how would you insert these tool steel razor blade edges almost into uh, into titanium, very difficult. But carbon fiber, you could make the carbon fiber blade almost around these, you know, tool steel blades and, oh my goodness, you could potentially make a really devastating sword far thinner than what you could get away with, at, you know, on average. And so I wonder if you could actually make it like, uh, see this edge here, uh, this carbon fiber little knife, it's about one and a half, two mils thick, okay? Um, and if we, you could make a whole sword that had retained this thickness along its whole length with uh, tool steel kind of blades embedded that would be interesting. There would be issues, there would be problems and, and difficulties to work with. For instance, if the edge was actually made out of this tool steel things, okay, it, uh, there would be gaps or at least, you know, where the join between one razor blade to the another might not be perfectly smooth. You could get it, you could get it to line up pretty good, I think. And so when you're drawing it through, uh, I wonder if those gaps could cause the blade to catch on anything or if it could actually make a saw-like effect on the blade which is an interesting thought. Oh, but I did say swords need a certain amount of weight to cut effectively. But if you remember, that is mostly to offset the fact that swords have a certain amount of width and you need that extra force to push apart the material that cut into. And so with carbon fiber being technically stronger than steel in certain circumstances, you should be able to get it away with the blade being thinner. And if it was thin enough and sharp enough, this sword could still potentially be devastatingly effective. But 
you'd only be able to find out through testing it, wouldn't you? So, who knows? Okay, this would be my thoughts, though. If we, the best kind of thing that I can think of, of a, a sword made out of modern advanced materials would be a composite of, say, something like carbon fiber and really hard tool steel on the edges, from my understanding of material properties and my own research that I've Done. Thank you very much for watching. Do share your thoughts in the comments down below. I'm really interested in reading them. And of course, I hope to see you in the next video. So until that time, farewell.